Hello, and welcome to the Root of All Podcasts. I'm Miles Newverth. And I'm Devin Newverth. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. How's it going? Oh, you know. I don't... It's going that, okay. That's why I asked. Because I don't, brother. That's fair. It's... I don't know. Well, uh, you know, it's going. <laughs> that's what people say. I guess. Why? We should really start getting to the the theological questions. Why? Why? Like, why is that what people say? I we'd have to find a podcast about that because, right. as everyone knows by this point, on our podcast we review and discuss other people's podcasts. So the only way we could have that very important discussion is if someone else did first and right. published it as a podcast. Of course, of course. Oh, we have some important news for the public. We've made a few modifications to our patented algorithm. Well, patent pending. It's, it's right, right, patent right, right, pending. Right. Yeah. But after the historic tie last week, we've done some retooling of the algorithm. Uh, and we think that it's going to give us a little more useful information at the end. Uh, it should be better experience for everyone. Yeah, we're the the go the we we retooled the output of the algorithm isn't necessarily to give us like a head to head comparison like a winner loser. Um, the the new goal of the alg- algorithm is to make recommendations for uh, for what kind of person might enjoy each podcast because everyone has different tastes, so different people might you know different strokes for different folks kind of situation. Yeah, one hundred percent. That being said. Uh, topic this week. What was it? This month of August, which is hopefully the month in which our podcast, this episode, will be released. We'll see. Um, <laughs> if the editing can, gets done quickly <laughs> enough, is National Sandwich Month. Which sounds like a pretty good month. I've eaten like eight sandwiches in the last week, so I'm rocking it. I make a sandwich pretty much every day for work, so I'm all about this. Um, but we wanted to be super topical again, but we wanted to give ourselves a little more leeway because our last episode did not come yeah. out on time. Yeah, it came out, well, it was a little late. technically it, released the week after Shark Week. Um, but, but it didn't then, get up on, on stuff until much later. Like now. Because getting your podcasts approved takes time, it turns out. But like they say in the biz... Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Whoop, whoopsie. Whoopsie doodle. All so we're right. Gonna, we're going to talk about some sandwich podcasts or some podcasts in which they talked about sandwiches. Definitely. Uh, I think I should probably go first since I died last week and you had to go first. You down with that? It's definitely your turn to go first. Cool beans. This week, I'm talking about a podcast called Shut Up a Second. It's a Sans Pants Radio podcast. I'm not entirely sure what Sans Pants Radio is, but if you guys out there listening are fans, feel free to just tweet at us just exactly what they are, how great they are. This podcast that I was listening to, Shut Up a Second, was great. I loved it, personally. It was very funny. Uh, Had three hosts, which, as we know, is not the perfect number of hosts, but it worked. I've enjoyed three host podcasts before. Yeah, it could definitely be uh, algorithm neutral, definitely. Yeah, but this is three hosts, Jackson, Doucher, and Allie. I'm not sure what Doucher's real name is. They mentioned it at one point, but I did not take notes, so I mostly just know it's Doucher. (laughs) That's a fun nickname. I think it's his last name. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's, or maybe it's last name adjacent. Again, if any of the Shut Up a Second fans or Sans Pants fans are listening, just, just, yeah, send us all the information on exactly who Doucher is, why, uh, uh, why that's the name. But moving on from that very, very cool last slash nickname, they talked about sandwiches. Which is fun. They had a couple fun games they played at the start. I thought it would be good if, if me and you played one. 
Um, this is a super like banter based podcast. So the entirety of the appeal is these three people, their energy, and the jokes that they make with each other. So I feel like if if we steal one of their games, it's not it's not like we're stealing their content because it will be a fundamentally different experience. Does that track with you? Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. So real quick, uh, you need to make the ultimate sandwich. The only rule is you can't use food. It's two slices of bread. Yes, they're buttered probably, but in between them can't be food and it has to be the ultimate sandwich. What do you do? Uh, slip a hundo in there. Just that's a hundo sandwich. That's a good sandwich. I like. Yeah, it does it have a little butter on it. Yes. Does it yeah. still spend? Absolutely. <laughs> you bite into that sandwich and you're upset because it's just bread and butter. But then you realize it's a hundo, so you There's can just a- buy a, a new sandwich. You could buy like several sandwiches depending on your sandwich <laughs> shop of choice. <laughs> probably at least a couple of sandwiches at least like a handful of sandwiches which a handful of sandwiches is really just one sandwich huh i think so like it's pretty like it's pretty (laughs) hand sized that's kind of the purpose of sandwich usually yeah yeah maybe you could get two sliders if they were like the little slider sandwiches it's true depending on the size of your hands and this gets into a debate that uh they touched on a bit um, in regards to, you know, what is a sandwich. But that's that's something we can probably talk about later. Um But yeah, I guess I don't know I don't know if my answer is nearly that good. I do like the idea of like you're buying the sandwich, but it's basically just like a way to get something useful. Like if it was like a toolbox sandwich, now you got a new toolbox. Moving into a new place, you need a toolbox. Um or maybe something like wood, like coffee. Does do because coffee? No, coffee is a food. I caffeine that, isn't I, a food. Yeah. What if you just put a bunch of caffeine pills in there? <laughs> just dump a bunch of caffeine pills in there. Eat them all up, good. You know that could that could work. Yeah. That could definitely work. Um, I mean you. You would have a lot of time to stay awake thinking about what you had done after you ate that sandwich. Yeah. And I I need caffeine now is mostly what I'm thinking. I should have made coffee, <laughs> but rushed right into the recording process and now I'm now I'm flying caffeineless. So you're gonna Uh-oh. have to deal with my caffeine fantasies playing out through my podcast description. Another thing they end up talking about in the podcast, besides <laughs> playing fun sandwich games. Yeah. Which I have another one we could also try later if we want to after this. But another thing they end up getting into is the history of sandwiches. Uh, they talk a- briefly about the Earl of Sandwich. And they only touch a little bit on who he was and why he invented Sandwich. Which was basically Earl of Sandwich. Technically the fourth Earl of Sandwich. So there mm-hmm. were three other of these guys who didn't invent the Sandwich. But Which seems four, like a waste of a name of a title. Yeah, right. Like they 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 did it bad, but it's fine. I found out that this guy's name was like. Oh, I forget. It wasn't John Malkovich. It's of course not John Malkovich. <laughs> but that's the only name I can think of now. So John the Earl Malkovich, of Sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich. He was he was the sixteenth <laughs> Earl of Sandwich, uh, it, and honorarily. So that's where the confusion comes from. Right, 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 right. But he had a name, and it wasn't Earl or Sandwich. So that's the main point <laughs> of Earl of Sandwich number four. Uh, they talk about he loved his greasy meats, but didn't like getting them on his hand. So he's like, give me some bread with which to hold the greasy meats, and sandwiches were invented. Hmm. So I'm, I don't know what i will be known for after i die i mean with with the the population as it is it'll probably be nothing um but i'm glad that i won't be known for my reaction to greasy meats well now you will (laughs) (laughs) that's fair i mean 
I, <laughs> I guess it beats nothing, honestly. Now that I now that I said that that existential thing earlier, being known for greasy meats does not seem that bad. So, <laughs> um, so here's the thing: is that also I know that like the history of sandwiches is like greatly like contested. Yeah, contested, and so like feel free to tweet at us about what you believe was the first sandwich because i guarantee right now someone is listening to this uh one of like 14 people who are like related to us or friends of ours is is listening to this and is going to say no that's not the first sandwich just just tweet at us it's fine right this see that's the thing this is where they kind of got into like what sandwich is because uh they had another fact that apparently, like, wraps, like, tortilla-wrapped foods, mm-hmm. predate the sandwich. Yeah, but that's a different thing. Right, but they're so often in similar categories. They compared them to, like, uh, like different points of evolution. I think they're more just, like, cousins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild, because, like, mm-hmm. if, an- if there was an Animorphs-style picture from a sandwich to a burrito a wrap would be right in the middle of it like wrap is what you hit on your way from sandwich to burrito because a wrap is basically a burrito but it's cold like a sandwich and you put sandwich stuff inside of it i think a burrito is just a type of wrap see i would think a wrap is a type of burrito but that's because i like burritos more so i i always (laughs) think of them first but so a burrito is specifically like with burrito ingredients, whereas a wrap is any food item that you wrap in like tortilla. See, like you could make like a hamburger wrap, and that's not a burrito. My favorite living author, uh, very often tweets burritos he has made, and he does exactly that though. He just throws anything in them. Well. Everyone's wrong about something. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Anytime I'm gonna I'm gonna shout him out. John Scalzi. You guys can follow him on Twitter at Scalzi. Uh, he does get told he's wrong about burritos every time he tweets <laughs> one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. He does it anyway though, and he still calls them burritos. <laughs> well, you know. He's an author, so he can... Words mean whatever he says they mean. I do think that's (laughs) what author means. Once you're published, that just means you can change the meaning of words. You make words now. (laughs) Words are yours. Words are are your weapons. But yeah, so it was... It's a delightful podcast. I can't recommend it enough. I know I didn't get too much into what it's about, but because it is like a banter-based podcast, I'm gonna say you're best off just listening to it uh we put all the information into the algorithm so at the end here i am going to give you um, a recommendation uh, as for who it's going to be aimed at uh or it's going to give us a recommendation as like who it thinks it's going to be aimed at other than that did you have any other questions about shut up a second and their episode on sandwiches um well the uh i think i can ask a question that'll help lead us into kind of a mid section here okay and and that is you know did they discuss uh what exactly did they discuss as far as what is and isn't a sandwich so that's the funny thing this is a debate that's gone on as long as time but they <laughs> didn't actually they only got as far as wraps they only went into like is wrap a sandwich i think the closest they got out of that topic is at one point they start discussing like sub sandwiches like how do you describe the bread of a sub sandwich because it doesn't really have a top half or a bottom half like a sub sandwich isn't really sandwiched between bread so i think that a sub sandwich what the reason that it's a sandwich is because you slice into the bread, and so it is sandwiched between the the sliced pieces of bread. That's what the difference between like a wrap and a sub. It, it's not like a a turkey taco because you 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 have it on 
on just the sides of the bread and it goes See, all the way on the three sides. That's a good point though. I think you have to because cut into the, the bread. Once you cut the into the bread though, the shape it becomes is a taco shape. <laughs> I might say you I think might a sub go, is a taco? I might say that sub and all is wraps taco. are burritos. All wraps are burritos. I think a sub might be a taco. <laughs> I don't and think so. And I think by that logic, so is our, so are hot dogs. I think hot dogs are tacos. Speaking of what a hot dog is. <laughs> I'm drawing a line in the sand on it. <laughs> <laughs> a hot dog is definitely not a taco. <laughs> I, I want to just clear that up right now. Um, and I would go as far as to say that a hot dog is a sandwich. See, here's my thing. Things in a sandwich... The meat, the cheese, the lettuce, the mayo, mustard, that. That by itself, if I had that sans bread, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call any of those pieces a sandwich, right? Yeah. If I have a hot dog outside of that bun, it's a hot dog. Here's the thing, though. is so people debate whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich, right? It's an ongoing debate. Right. But, um... Which, obviously, now we know, it's a taco. It's definitely a sandwich. Uh, but the here's, here's the thing that I think is going to disprove what you just said. A hamburger is definitively a sandwich. There's no arguing about it. A hamburger is a type of sandwich. It falls clearly into that. But if you take a burger patty and you grill up the burger patty, it's still a burger. Even if it's not on the, the sandwich. You still go... You look at that and you see... That's a burger. No, you're not wrong. It doesn't matter what's on it. And it is definitely, there's no argument about if you ask, like, a burger is this type of sandwich. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong having the ingredients be identifiable individually as a sandwich, like, I don't think that that... All I'm saying is maybe we could meet in the middle and call them hot dog sandwiches. Like, the hot dog (laughs) is a hot dog, you put it in a bun, that's a hot dog sandwich. But that's too many words. (laughs) <laughs> listen it's, i live why in new you york call it a hot so... dog sandwich okay but then mm. we can call it a hot dog sandwich but you also every time you order a burger you have to say i would like a hamburger sandwich so here's the thing that i was gonna I... bring up with with hamburgers is anytime i order a hamburger i'm not saying hey can you give me a hamburger please it's could i get a big mac or a mcdouble or a quarter pounder or a whopper Hamburger so only... sandwiches, hamburg. Yeah, I only go to fast food places. No, uh, I I worked at a burger bar. We had the uh, double double. We had the cheeseburger baby. We had the um, widow maker. When you make a hamburger into a hamburger sandwich, and it's like a specific type of hamburger sandwich, you give that hamburger sandwich a name, so you don't have to call it a hamburger sandwich. You threw some mac and cheese and bacon on it. It's a widow maker. Baby, you put avocado on it. It's a Californian for some reason. Every time, every single restaurant in the world with avocado on their burger calls it a California burger. So then, how about a Coney Island? Like a for for your that, dog? For a Co- Co- Coney Island dog. That is a yeah. dog with the name. No, so is you're that right. a sandwich then? Y- yeah, that's the thing. So they're doing that to <laughs> avoid calling them hot dog sandwiches. Don't get me wrong. All I'm saying is. If if I was going to buy into the idea that hot dogs are sandwiches, I would just request that you refer to them as hot dog sandwiches. But as we have established previously, the shape of that bun is taco shaped. That's a hot dog taco or a hot hot doggo. So if you would. <laughs> so are you saying that euros are just Greek tacos? Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay, I just though they to clear though that they up. verge on they verge on burritos because um it depends where you are. Sometimes they'll do like the funnel, which is almost a a a burrito or wrap shape. Okay, so um I do have some some dictionary definitions really quickly before I get into my podcast because this is a very important issue. Right. Um, from Miriam Webster online, they actually did a whole article up. Um, first they have the definition of a sandwich. Um, so just for, from the dictionary definition of what a sandwich is, it is, it has two definitions. 
uh, either two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. And the second definition is one slice of bread covered with food. Um, <laughs> That's those, wild. Those are standard definitions. I'm so, sorry, like, could I get an avocado... I'm sorry, could I get an avocado toast sandwich, please? What are they talking about? <laughs> That's the dictionary. They, once again... The, you're the dictionary. You get to make words mean whenever you want. Listen, the dictionary has never published a book. It is a published book. <laughs> the but dictionary the, is not an author. No, but the dictionary. But the editors of, like, the people who who write the dictionary are authors. So if they wrote the dictionary and publish it, then that makes them dictionary authors. You got me there. You got me there. What can I say? So we, the definition of a hot dog, according to Merriam-Webster, um is uh, frankfurter, especially a frankfurter heated and served on a long sp- split roll, um, which a frankfurter is a type of sausage. Um, right. It's, uh, a, a hot dog was originally slang. Um, the word hot dog refers to either the sausage that you buy squeezed in a plastic package with seven or so of its kind, or the same sausage heated and served on a long split roll. When you serve it on a roll, it is also a sandwich. The dictionary says this? This is from their article about it. Um, so right. they talk about how basically because you, you you put it on a split roll, that makes it a sandwich. Because a sub, Basically, they say because a sub sandwich or a hero sandwich, if you're in New York like a crazy person, um, is a sandwich, then a hot dog is a sandwich. And no sane person would claim that a sub is a taco. <laughs> Listen, so, I've seen I've seen tacos. I've seen subs. I've seen both be made. Like the process I think is exactly the cut, same. No. You 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 do you have to if tortillas are being cut before you put the taco meat in there, then we can have that discussion. Listen. <laughs> I've never cut a slice of bread in my life. <laughs> For all I know, they come out of the oven sliced. <laughs> They, I, I think they do now. That's the, isn't that what they mean by they invented sliced bread? Like you just bake it and it's sliced. That's possible. Technology's wild. I'm sure someone has invented that before or tried to invent that before. Oh, I'm positive. Just, just a I pan have... that is pre. They make they make uh, brownies that come like pre squared off. They have the... someone has to have tried to invent pre sliced bread. Right. The issue is the crust air quotes crust of a brownie is delicious so when you add the extra slices and make every piece a corner piece on all sides you've improved the brownie i feel like if you tried to do that with the bread what you've done is invented an entire loaf of bread that is just the butt of the loaf and that is the worst part of the loaf that'd be like trying to uh make a restaurant called muffin stumps (laughs) yes Mm, exactly. Just the muffin stumps. Love that. <laughs> Lil Stumpies. That's the name I'm, of my new restaurant opening saying, uh, this fall. The top of a muffin is pretty much just like a fluffy cookie, right? But like it's so good. It had yeah, but it has a stump. Like the stump is what you hold, but basically that's a method of getting the fluffy. <laughs> like if you it's cut the handle. stump off, if you cut the stump off and you look at it, it looks like a poofy cookie. Basically, it's like muffin tops are just fl- are just poofy. Oh, cookies. it's it's like a, a a brookie. Like, have you had those where it's like a brownie slash cookie? No, that's kind of what a muffin top is. Basically, though, yes, I agree. And it comes with that that stump handle. It's it's like a like a the stick in the corn dog, except that theoretically, technically, you can eat it if you're a monster. Yeah. All right, we got to hear more about your podcast. So anyways, um, as you might so have uh, I will, surmised... I will posit that for the sake of this podcast, a hot dog is a sandwich. You may continue. So uh, my podcast, as you might have guessed by this point, is about hot dogs. Um, it is uh, from an episode of The Sporkful. Um, and the episode is called, This Hot Dog Tastes Like Home. Okay. Uh, the Sporkful is... Uh, Produced on uh, for Stitcher, and uh, 
They are uh, on the Twitter at the Sporkful, no space. Um, and this this uh, they they right away on the beginning of every episode they say the Sporkful isn't for foodies; it's for eaters. So it's not about like fancy food; it's about like soul. Like it's about like how food makes you feel, not about like this you need to have the chip. right type of yeah. This isn't Iron Chef, it's Drivers, Dive-Ins, and Dives. Kind of. So it's, like, the, the editing is very good. There's a lot of, uh, of music between edits and stuff like that. He does, like, a mix of voiceover-type edits and interviews with, with people. Like, the, the production value on, his, on the podcast is fantastic. Like, he actually has, like, producers and editor people. Um, Weird. So it's like super, like super high end. Um, there is a right away. It starts with an ad break, and tells you that that's happening with like a cute little pun, and does like a minute of ads, and then about halfway through it does another little minute of ads. Um, it is uh, sorry. This uh channel is hosted. It's one host, Dan Pashman, usually with guests and interviewers, and I mean and interviewees and stuff. So there's conversations that go on back and forth, but it does only have the one host. So right. that will that will be taken into account in the algorithm. Dan Pashman, uh, he's had shows on the Cooking Channel, uh, You're Eating It Wrong, and has written uh, books. Uh, the uh, the book Eat More Better. Um, so he's you know in, out in the in the the food world, discussing food with people. He's um, a name. This, yeah, he's a he's a real like semi-famous person that people have heard of theoretically. I hadn't, but I'm sure people have. Yeah. Um and feel free to tweet at me about why I should have heard of him. That's fine. Um the that, that's, the name of our podcast should have been please tweet at us because we say <laughs> that a lot. Good. <laughs> do it. That <laughs> How about just like at me, bro? That should have been should have been the name of our podcast. Right. It doesn't at fit me. W- it doesn't fit with the the podcast, but we could have come up with a podcast to fit the name because it's yeah, a yeah. better name. All right. <laughs> More about Dan Pat Patchman Patchman Pashman Pashman. Yeah, no T in that in that last name. He's the um, Pash Pashwork man. No, no. <laughs> 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 All right. Um. But so the. Uh, it is uh, been award nominated podcast uh, for the James Beard Award. It was nominated. Uh, it talks about it explores the huge, fun, surprising world of food and eating that lies beyond the realm of chefs, chefs restaurants, and recipes. Um, so that's the general vibe of the show. So in this episode, he goes to two iconic hot dog joints in Detroit and New Jersey uh, to just talk about what makes him special. He also has. Uh, Kenji Lopez talk about some of the science of deep fried hot dogs because they talk about deep fried hot dogs later in the episode. The, Is that a sandwich? Uh, yes, it's a it's a hot dog. But wait, it's on a bun. Oh, you it's deep not fry on a stick. It? You deep fry it and put it on a bun. So that instead of instead of like grilling it or boiling it. They deep fry it and then put it in a bun. Okay, it's not. Is it breaded before it's, not a, it's deep no. fried? Oh, okay. no, it is not. It is just cooked in the fryer. It's. A, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Uh, so the first half of the podcast, he talks about Red Hots, which is a joint uh, just outside of Detroit, um, where they sell Coney Island dogs. Um, the, like it's one of the pre, uh, so Coney Island dogs, obviously started. In, in New York, Coney at Island. Coney Island, um, and the uh, the reason that, that kind of spread out into the country is the hot dogs and Coney Island dogs were called that because they were a sausage that was so cheap that people figured the only way they could make it was by making it out a dog. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, Coney Island didn't like that they were calling them hot dogs. And so they actually passed a law to make it illegal to have any signage that said hot dogs where you were selling hot dogs. That is not true any longer, I can tell you. Yeah, 
No, but so they called them Coney Islands. And then all these, in, in New York, a lot of immigrants came into New York, and they really liked these sausages. And they were called Coney Islands. So that's what they called them. Like, they, they could not be called hot dogs, so they were called Coney Islands. And so they took that name with them when they went elsewhere. And uh, one of this, this family was a Greek family who basically took that idea of the Coney Island hot dog and said, we're doing that in Detroit. Um, so they, they, they went to Detroit. They've been there since, like, the original Ford Model T plant uh, was there. Wild. So a long history being in Detroit. He spends a lot of time talking with, like, patrons who have been going there for generations, for, like, four or five generations who have, like, heard stories from their families about workers from the plant, like, getting off, they have a half hour for lunch, and running to get a hot dog, and then running across the street to the bar to get a pint, and then going back to work. Right. Um, and stuff like that. That's just really cool history of Detroit. Um, they, uh, um, they talk about how, so a Coney Island dog, for someone who is unaware, is... A regular hot dog with mustard, chili, and onions. It's great. Um, oftentimes, you will see chili and then mustard and then onions because that looks prettier. You can see all the yeah. colors. <clears throat> um, at this particular, at Red Hots in Detroit, or near Detroit, they do mustard, then chili, and then onions because the point of the mustard is to accent the chili like there's it's it does a better job of doing that when it's underneath the chili sure so they put it there so it tastes better versus looking better because that's more important to them yeah. which is very cool they're one of the few places that still makes their own chili from scratch every morning um it's uh it's, it's a really cool little joint and they like i said they get into spend a little time talking about the hot dogs uh dan says he ate three of them so he really liked them and actually listening to this podcast i for the first time in my life, ate a hot dog with a little bit of mustard on it, because we had chili, so we were doing chili dogs, All right. and I put some mustard on it, and it was delicious. I'm glad so, to hear that. So, this this podcast expanded my horizons. It could did, expand yours, too. Yeah. Did I tell um, you I've started liking mustard again? Huh. Yeah, because when I... would stop. Yeah, when I was when I was like a young child, I put mustard on my stuff all the time. But like, I gotta say, from like ten to twenty five, I didn't touch mustard. I blame Dad for that, probably. I don't know it was something about it. Like, I just I feel like I hit a point where I wasn't really doing anything that wasn't like like straight up sweet or savory. I don't know. Like, I wasn't a huge fan of pepper either. Mm. But now, yeah, I'll, I'll do pepper. I'll definitely do some mustard. Yeah. Well, uh, isn't that a coincidence? Yeah. All right. Um. So that's the first half of the podcast. Um, and then we get our second ad break, which is is the place in New Jersey. Is is. Um, Hot Rods. Uh, it's Rut's Hut. Dang it. Hot Rods, Hot Dogs is a great place in New Jersey that I'm personally a fan of, but I'm sure this other place is also good. So Rut's Hut is a place that Dan Pashman's family has personally been going to for generations. Ah. Uh. And so he actually invited his family with him to go and record the podcast there, and he interviewed his family and the owner and, uh, and talked about that. So at, uh, at Rut's Hut in New Jersey, they... Uh, they do deep fried hot dogs, um, where you literally just take the hot dog and you put it in the fryer for a varying amount of time, and uh, and then throw it on a bun. And they do it at like different levels of doneness. They'll do like all they'll do like inner outers where it's literally just probably barely warm, all the way up to what they call a cremator, where they you literally you're done with it and you they it's like when someone orders that, they, like, tap on the counter. They're like, that's how done it's going to be. Um, so, <laughs> they're, they're basically eating charcoal at that point. But some people order them. Fair enough. Um, I suppose I mean, it's like kind like. of... 
Yeah, it's kind of cheating to have to say that hot dog tastes like home when like that hot dog is the one you grew up eating. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it does taste like home. Yeah, yeah. It's cause... but it's not like I was thinking like ratatouille. Like, oh, this hot dog reminds me of a hot dog from my youth. No, this is literally a hot dog from my youth. So in fairness, like he 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 had he had only been there a couple times when he was very 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 young. Uh. Um. But like so like when his grandfather passed away, his whole family went to Rut's Hut after that. Ah. Uh. Um. But uh, like he hasn't been back since then. Um, where his family used to go there all the time. And so it was more like his, his mom and his dad were talking about how it tasted like home. Okay. Um, they also have, uh, the, they also have yoo Like the uh, chocolate soda? Like the chocolate, like the chocolate beverage that's not milk. Um, but they call them a Marvis because apparently around New Jersey, there used to be a different brand of chocolate beverage that was not a yoo that, like, that company went under or got bought out or doesn't exist anymore, but, like, they still call them that there. Interesting. So you can go to, to Rut's Hut in New Jersey and order a Marvis, and they will bring you a yoo and just, like, that's what they'll do. Fascinating. Okay, okay. I think I would probably drink a yoo if it was in front of me. I know that I shouldn't, but I think I probably would. <laughs> I, I honestly, so I'm pretty sure it's like a chocolate milk soda, but I don't think there's any milk None. or any chocolate actually in it. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know I, how they do that. It's pure chemicals. I, I don't, I, you could have actually, if you were making a sandwich without food, you could put yoo on it because I don't <laughs> think a yoo is technically, they cannot technically classify it as food. Right. Okay. I might that might change my answer, but I'm but I'm not uh, not sure on that yet. Uh, um, but what you, about you know, used I, tea bags? Would that be a good sandwich? Why used tea bags? <laughs> you know, so they got the so they're not too dry. You don't want a dry sandwich. <laughs> but I I think a an unused a fresh tea bag would be better because then you could like you bite into it, you're disappointed. But then you're like, well, at least I can have a cup of tea. Maybe. Or maybe you just you, you just drink some boiling water, make some tea in your mouth. Yeah. Swallow oh. it down. Yeah. The gargle method. <laughs> Everyone knows if you're if you're a, a, a true Brit, that's the only way to drink tea. It's the freshest tea. The freshest tea. As if it's brewed in your mouth. Brewed in your mouth. Only way to do it. It's what I've heard at least. It's why a lot of people from, from Britain don't like Star Trek. They're like, Jean-Luc Picard always ordering that tea from the computer. The computer uh, didn't make it in his mouth. So So it's actually illegal to brew tea any other way. Uh, or at least it was until, uh, until the mid-2000s. And that's why um, they actually couldn't air The Next Generation on BBC until the mid-2000s. Yeah. I don't know, like, if you've watched Doctor Who, if you watch Doctor Who, they used to advertise new episodes of Next Generation. That's because they had never aired on BBC because it was illegal. They had, they had to change a law just because you could not depict tea not being made directly in your mouth. That's wild. That's so, that's so crazy. Those Brits, you know? But, you know, they, they know how to do it. Like, I, I would knock it, but I haven't tried it, and they're probably right, so... If you're British and that's not how you make tea, then, then just tweet at us. Just tweet us. Just add us. <laughs> just tweet at us. That that segment would be our whole podcast if it was at me, bro. That that podcast <laughs> yeah. is just us like stating facts. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> just stating very correct facts. Um Definitely true facts. Alright. Well and uh, asking you... for corrections. Yeah. Um <laughs> So, um, I, I assume his family and them loved the, the home dogs from Rut's Hut? From their home, where they where they used to live. They had all moved away. So, it had been a long time since they had all been to the, to the Rut's Hut. Um, so, it was like memory lane for, for them. I have a quick is, question yes. based on that. What if, say, me and you were back in, in Rochester, Minnesota... What thing would taste like home? 
and I'm looking for specifically for something like from our shared childhood. I know you spent a lot more time in Rochester than I did, so you probably have some later memories than me. But what would it be from from our our youth in that city? So some if if I'm looking for something that's specifically Rochester, I would have to say Roscoe's Barbecue. That was exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking Roscoe's the, Barbecue. Or the root beer. Like, specifically the Roscoe's root beer. Yeah. They made their homemade root beer and their, their sauce. You, they, they actually closed. They're not a restaurant anymore. But you can still get the sauce. That's good. I'm, I'm glad for that, at least. Because yeah. how else will I taste home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll have to order online. Because I doubt they have it in your local... Uh, convenience store in New York. No. Uh, I would have. I would have <laughs> noticed that. I would have noticed that one. <laughs> Roscoe's. Yeah. You you would have gotten a a a text message of a photo. I was gonna say a Snapchat, but I don't use Snapchat. <laughs> I'm not a youth. <laughs> <laughs> only only the children use Snapchat. Listen, I think there's an age cutoff, and it's like exactly the day I was born. I've tried. I can't get behind it. But like it's... Ame is not much younger than me and she uses it sometimes. Not a lot. So she's yeah. borderline and you're just like pa- just past the deadline. Yeah. I yeah, I think it's like a day you know, like a lot of websites they're like make sure you're at least like thirteen. Yeah. It's like the opposite of that. If you try to log into Snapchat and you put in a date that says you're like over twenty six, they're just like, Nope, you can't yeah. log in. You Try again. To you're too old 26. to use this app. Under 26 or have a million subscribers on YouTube. Only way yeah. to be on Snapchat. But I think having a million subscribers on YouTube, like, definitely cuts off a few years of your age. I think you're legally younger. Well, you, you, when you when you make a deal with the devil in order to get your million subscribers, because that's yeah. how that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you have to sign a contract with the Satan, and... Uh, he, he also takes a couple years off your life. Uh, it, like, makes you a couple years younger. It's yeah. It's just part he, of the and deal. And that's the thing. It, it throws does, it in. It does take years off your life. You will die sooner. It's just, it's <laughs> weird because he takes them out of the middle. <laughs> like, he just, you're just younger now. <laughs> yep. I'm still waiting for Satan to show up and offer me the deal for this podcast. Because, uh, yeah, no. One, I, I could use, uh, I could use being a few years younger. And two... I want a million listeners for our podcast. So I'll just at me, devil. At me, <laughs> at me, tweet us. At tweet me at Satan. Us. If you're the devil and you're listening, just tweet at us. All right. I've been very tangential. That's not it. Um, but I've been very tan, tangent, tangerine Um Is there anything else you need to add before we kick this over to the algorithm? Tangela? Is that what you've been? I've been a Tangela. Does Tangela evolve? Have they given ta- give Tangela an evolution? You cowards. They might have. I I they there's there so many Pokemon now, brother. There's so many Pokemans. There's I like would a love thousand. Tangela like either like had like one of those like sw- like completely different evolutions. Um, like Dratini to Dragonite. Where suddenly it's it's it looks like an orange Barney. Like, well, how did this happen to the beautiful blue, blue snake monster? Why is he orange Barney now? Like something like that to happen to Tangela, or it'd just be like a bunch of them stuck together like Diglett. But what I want is for the <laughs> name to sound. Yeah, I know. I want I want the name to be based somehow on like the Gordian knot. Mm. So that that's what I'm thinking of. Either I picture like almost like. Uh, like a, a kingly figure or a, just a just a cluster mess of Tangela's are the two options for my Gordian not Tangela evolution. None of this is sandwich related. <laughs> Please. You're talking about being on a tangent and we turned it into another tangent. It, it, it wasn't very helpful. No. <laughs> my bad. Are we ready to kick this on over to the algorithm? We sh- definitely should do that. Awesome. Awesome. So, we just got to enter all that information. Well, we've entered most of it already. Uh, I have a few of the points you made are relevant to my podcast, so I'm just going to get those in real quick, and we're going to have it computing shortly. Perfect. We should have our printout any second. Oh, here, it's, here it comes. 
Oh, awesome. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, we got some some uh, grade A assessments of these podcasts. I'm going to start with with my podcast. It says here, uh, shut up a second, is a great podcast for when you need friends. So that seems a little... I'm not, sh- I'm not sure about that algorithm. That seems... I see what they're getting harsh. at. I see what they're getting at because it's a bantery podcast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it says specifically if you... Or, or, or if you, you wish your friends were cleverer and funnier. I guess it's getting at... You're listening because you're pretending these three people are your friends. Ah. So, so if you're lonely or just have boring friends, yeah. then listen... Listen to that podcast. To shut up a second, because yeah. they, because it's like having three funny, clever friends that you can listen to on the way to work, or uh, on. I only listen to podcasts on the way to work, so I don't know when anyone else does it. Um, you know, if you're doing the dishes, or, um, uh, yeah, mostly on the way to work. Right. Okay. So, um, what, what does it say? What does it say about your podcast? Um, so when it comes to uh, The Sporkful, um, it recommends The Sporkful for uh, anyone who enjoys viewing shows on the Travel Channel or, uh, or the Food Network. That makes a lot of sense. The, uh, so if you, like, if, you, if you like Travel Channel shows... Then, then you will probably like this podcast. Cool. Because you can enjoy it without having to, to watch. So it's perfect for, uh, for you know, if you're on the go, say, say on the way to work, or if you're doing the dishes. Yeah. If you got that, if you got that itch for like, if you wanted to watch Drivers, Divins, and Dives, would this do it for you? I, I've never actually seen that show. It's great. But I'm sure it would. You've you've eaten at a Guy Fieri restaurant. I uh, mean, it, it's because we were on a cruise ship, and it was one of the only options. But you, like, how can you not have seen Drivers, Divers, and Divers? Have you stayed at a hotel? They were... I'm pretty sure it's the only thing they play in hotel rooms, is Drivers, Divers, and Dives. That's not true. I usually watch Animal Planet, so I get, like, the, the fish tank shows. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, that is the other thing they play. For, so you, you, you got me there. I, I like Tanked. That's what plays at most of my hotels. I recommend it. It's great. What's nice, though, is um we watched a bunch of Drivers, Divins, and Dives when I was living in New Jersey with Hame. Mm-hmm. And they would they go to places in New Jersey a lot. And we always talked about going to one of them. We never did, but we always <laughs> talked about it. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, really added to the experience, I think, you know? Yeah, it, having the ability to go and just being like, nah. Yeah, it's like, maybe, someday. You know, if we have time, it'd be cool. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, it's just knowing you can. Awesome. So I do want to, uh, can I thank people for listening? Are we at that part now? Um, I think we are at that part. Hey, audience, thanks for listening. We appreciate it a lot. We also thank Ame for letting me use her microphone and Mom for letting Brother use her computer. Thank you. Anyone else we need to thank? Anyone who adds us on Twitter? They Anyone? Think... If you add us on Twitter, we will send a personal thank you to you via Twitter. That Definitely. Offer, that offer lasts until it becomes untenable, but it might never become untenable. So you're probably chill. Uh, thanks to our, the uh, thanks to Dan Pashman and the people at the Sporkful. For... Thank you. Yeah, you can finish your sentence. <laughs> <laughs> can I? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, th- thanks to Dan Pashman and the uh, the wonderful people over at Sporkful for making content for us to mine for uh, our own content. Yeah, and a similar, a very similar thank you to the people that shut up a second. Uh, Doucher, Allie, and Jackson for, you know, just hanging out and having a good time, letting me hang out with you and pretend that I have friends on the way to work. (laughs) 
um, yeah, once again, thank you for listening. We're going to wrap things up. And remember, everyone at home, uh, uh, brother, bro- brother loves me. TTFM. <laughs> Ta-ta for now.